Hello, Cartooniacs! <laughs> Welcome! Dave McDonald's Quarantunes, number 56. It's a great day! I hope you're having a wonderful day as well. Kind of a sad day, though. I think what we're going to have to do is kind of stop the Quarantunes daily and go to a weekly schedule. So I probably won't be doing um, new drawing cartoons every weekday. We'll probably go to a Saturday morning format once a week, unless I get so much backlash that <laughs> that I can't stand it. I know, uh, I know. There's some people out there, <clears throat> my number one fans. Uh, they're they're a little sad that I'm not going to be drawing every day. In fact, yesterday with uh, remember we drew Granny Blossom Possum. <laughs> She, remember when we drew her, she was based on a puppet character from a show that I performed. And I promised that I would try to look for the puppet, although I can't, I know where the puppet is. It's just buried under about 500 tons of Christmas decorations. So I can't get to her. <laughs> and I know that has some people upset. <clears throat> My number one fans are like, ah, where's the puppet? I want to see the puppet. <laughs> I'd like to see the puppet too. <laughs> Yes, sometimes our number one fans can be our toughest critics, right? Well, I can't find the puppet right now. Again, I know where it is. I can't get to it. I would need a backhoe. <laughs> and if you'd like to complain to the management, I invite you to email me here, mycartoonart at yahoo.com, and just let, uh, let the management know that you're not satisfied with the quarantunes going down the tubes, not showing puppets. <laughs> I promise, hey, by Christmas time, I can dig that puppet out and we can show it to you. <laughs> but again, I, I plan to go Saturdays with our videos. We'll just see how that goes. During the summertime, I know a lot of my friends are on vacation. They're not doing as much online anymore because the, the school, the e-learning is over for most of them. So <clears throat> most of the viewers are taking a break as well. So. We'll, we'll plan on doing that kind of a schedule from here on out. But I did want to leave you today with one last drawing, and it's a character from my book, Hamster Sam, and his name is Miles the Inchworm. Miles the Inchworm. Get it? <laughs> Miles Inch. <laughs> yep, he's a little guy, and he reads lots of books. He's a bookworm in the story, and... So he starts off, and I, I designed this character using the simple shapes. And this is a really good example of how a combination of shapes can make up one shape. And that's the head. So watch this. On your paper with your pencil, an oval that's tilted over to its side. So kind of like this. An oval that went tipped over. And then we need a circle here off to the side, and a circle down here, kind of at the bottom below that. So an oval and two circles, then another tall, skinny oval, like this, watch. Whoa, all right. From there, put your pencil here, once we have this nice, big, tall, skinny oval, and just take a curved line that goes down back down to this oval. So it's just a little curved line. All right, here's the deal with the face and the head. These are the two eyeballs. This is the shape of the head, this oval plus these two circles. All right, so basically it would go like this. Come down, and what I should do at this point, I know this is different than what I normally do, but I want you to see how these three shapes make up one shape of the head. Okay, first we'll do this. This is just an eyeball. This stands alone. So we'll, we'll do the eyeball. All right, nice, tall, skinny eyeball. See that? Okay, and then this curve line, bring it down to here. All right, now again, these three shapes will make up the shape of the face, of the head, watch. It's almost like driving a car around a road course. Watch this. All right. Ooh, take a right turn. Down 
follow that circle. See how we came around and followed the bottom of that circle? And then we're going to follow the edge of that circle around. See that? So three shapes to make one shape. Okay. This is where his mouth will be. So put a smile here. Open the mouth. Give him a nice big smile. Maybe a curve line at the bottom for a tongue. Fill in around the tongue. All right. Pupils. He's going to be looking out at us. So let's see. Big oval, black oval right here will be the pupil. All right. Circle in the corner or up at the top for the reflection. All right. And over here, again, we're not seeing the whole eye, so all we're going to do is see, remember how we did this, just this curved line? Same thing with the pupil. Just a curved line that goes out a little bit and then comes back in. And a little part of the reflection circle. All right. So he's looking at the reader. All right. Now his these eyeballs are actually glasses in the story. So what we have to do is this. At the top, go out with a straight line. At the bottom, go out with a straight line. Now, follow this line right here, out here. Follow this, the shape of this curved line out here because it's the edge of the glasses. And then this gets all filled in. Where's my big Sharpie? This will take a long time with a small marker. So get the old big Sharpie out. This is black. It's the edge of the plastic glasses frames. Usually at the top, I'll leave a couple stripes of white to indicate. What is that white going to do? It's the same thing with the eyeballs. It's plastic. It's shiny. So it's creating a reflection off the top. See that? Okay. And let's see, a little hint over here at the top of the frame. And then the little glasses, the stem of the glasses, just come out with a straight line, straight line, and then fill that in. Although you can leave a little strip of white at the top again, just for a little hint of light reflecting off that. See that? So the glass is sticking off there to the side. All right. So I don't normally ink part of the drawing before I finish the drawing, but in this case, I did want you to see uh, before it got too complicated, how I used these three shapes to make the face and the head. Okay. For the body, it's just a series of curved lines. Watch. It's almost like a letter C come out. Make like a letter C. And then another slightly, like a half a letter C, not even a half, just a slight curved line. All right. All right. So you got letter C, slight curved line. All right. Now an upside down letter U. So we have to go something like this. Upside down letter U. All right. Now put your pencil here and we're going to make almost like a letter U here, right? And, and it looks kind of like a W at the bottom almost. And then put your pencil here and we can erase just a tiny bit of that there, but put your pencil here over the top, create the tail over the top. Curl it back under, bring it back to here. All right, so that's the body. And at the bottom, you can have little shadows that we can fill in with ink and some motion lines. All right, so let's ink that. Let's see, is this ink? Maybe I should try this pen. There we go. A little thicker on the bottom, a little heavier, just to indicate that the weight's at the bottom. Okay. Another line. The 
upside down letter U. Regular letter U. Up and over the top and around to the bottom again. All right. There's the basic shape. Now I will put a little shadow underneath the head. Again, the head has mass size, so it's going to create a shadow a little bit under underneath on that neck. And sometimes what I like to do is just to create some shadow with some hash lines at the bottom, just to look just like this. Because again, it's going to be a little darker. Now with color, you could just color a little heavier and make it darker with that. But when you're working in black and white, this is what I like to do, just to give it a little weight on the bottom. Okay, shadow. Inching along, right? One inch at a time. There we go. Some motion lines. He's obviously moving, so. Moving forward here. All right, let's put a horizon line behind him. And you could do some pine trees. Maybe we'll put our little cloud over here. There's our cloud. All right, how we do? Again, using several simple shapes put together to create the finished shape of the head or the body, right? It's like you're using construction blocks. That's how I like to think of it, building blocks, right? It's a fun way in your, if you have a sketchbook or just a notebook that you like to draw in, I like to sit there sometimes and just use some simple shapes, arrange them in different patterns and see what that sh those different shapes combined can create. Whether it's the head of a, a new brand new character or it's the body of a character. It's just fun to play around with those shapes and see what you can come up with. All right, okay, there's Miles the Inchworm. He's from the Hamster Sand book. But I did want to show you, especially this character, because of the fact that we used to get this shape, I used three different shapes. And that allows me to draw him over and over again. And typically he looks pretty much the same every time because I'm still using, I'm using the same oval shape, the same circles. And so he comes out looking pretty much the same every time I draw him. All right, so there's Miles the Inchworm. I hope you had fun today. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And again, look for me on Saturday mornings. Um, I'll probably upload by, uh, I don't know, 8 or 9 a.m. I'll schedule those to come up and uh, we'll continue drawing, right? Hope you had fun today drawing Miles the Inchworm. <laughs> okay, until next time, be safe, stay well, and take care of one another. All right, bye-bye.